Hi, welcome back to my channel. I am Puzzling Bibliophile. I was thinking about putting the word the in front, the Puzzling Bibliophile, but we're just going to leave it the way it is. So what I'm doing today is I'm going to show you my December wrap up and I've got other videos planned. So even though today's only the 30th, I'm going ahead and making this video because I've got other things that I've got to get done. So the first thing I want to show you is this graph from the Puzzle Tracker app. Now I'm gonna flash it up there here on my, the way I just did, but I think I'm also gonna flash it on the screen. So when I look at this here, it tells me that I've completed nine 500 piece puzzles, seven 1000 piece puzzles, and four 750 piece puzzles, okay? My brands were Buffalo Games were the most at six, Evil with four, and the going down to the least was USopoly with one, and there's others in there. And if I pull up my piece count, I did 14,500 pieces in the 20 puzzles that I completed. So that's my statistics. Now let's get on to the puzzles themselves. Okay, in no particular order, I'm going to just show you them just the way I have the boxes stacked. This first one is called Basket Case. It's a Cobble Hill jigsaw puzzle. I loved it. I love kittens and I love cats. And this is one of two puzzles that has yarn in it for this month with cats. So this is Basket Case, again, 500 pieces by Cobble Hill. The next puzzle I did was Floral Gradients. And when you look on this channel, you'll see that I did this puzzle color by color all the way across. It was a lot of fun. It's only 500 pieces, so it wasn't difficult. You have your different elements. You have your flowers and you have a little bit of water. So you have a reflection down here and you have the inside of the flowers. So I love this one. This might be my favorite puzzle for December. I'm not quite sure, but it might be. And this is called Cat, ne uh, excuse me, Dr. Seuss. And it's just called Dr. Seuss. And it's a 1000 piece puzzle from USAopoly. First time I've ever done this brand, I would do it again. I only did this puzzle because my friend Hope had it and I fell in love with it. it yeah, as you see, it has nine book covers. So I looked at this puzzle as nine individual puzzles and I just did a cover at a time. And again, all these puzzles that I'm showing you now are also on this channel and you'll see the upload of that. Now, I love gradient puzzles and this one here is called uh, Comfortable Rainbow. I just want to make sure the box is correct. So this Comfortable Rainbow puzzle was a lot of fun because it is in the gradient style. So it was a very easy puzzle to put together. Even though you have like all the different patterns, once you recognize the patterns and the matching colors, then it goes together like butter. Okay, now I'm going to show you the four Ibu puzzles that I did. Another 500 piece puzzle, and this one is called, I should know these puzzles by name, but I don't. This one is called Tea Party. I loved it. I love the round puzzles. I didn't put any Ibu puzzles as favorites for 2023, but I love the brand and I have over 50 of them in my collection. So I try to do three or four each month. I think for January, just looking at the stack for January, for January, I only have three lined up, but my goal is three to four of these each month. So this is Tea Party. The artist is Monica Forsberg. The next Ibu puzzle I did is I just want to see if there's an artist. This is for Mia Tanaka, and this one is called Mushrooms and Butterflies. And here you go. And as I'm doing this, hopefully when I edit this video, I will be incorporating the individual puzzles as I completed them because they're in a folder on my phone and on my tablet. So this one here, Mushrooms and Butterflies, I loved it. It was a little bit challenging because of the colors being, you know, pretty much in the same range, but I can't go wrong when it comes to an evil puzzle, so I loved it. 
This was one of the most enjoyable puzzles. It could be listed in my top favorites for December and it's called 100 Great Words. There's no artist attributed to this because it's simply just 100 words in any orientation. What I had a great time doing this is I used my Echo device. I'm not gonna use the other word because it will trigger it. But I used my Echo device to give me the definitions of words that I had not had heard before, like nadir or obstreperous. Um, I knew what obfuscate was, fuscate, I was saying it wrong. Um, or in some cases, I wanted to get the exact definition. So I really had a lot of fun with this puzzle. It was a thinking puzzle, and I love that. I just love that. The last Ibu puzzle that I did in December is called Reading and Relaxing. And this is Ashikan Hussein. And I love this. Anything to do with reading. Now, our reader is in the bathtub she's got books she's reading a book she's got books near her and it's just a beautiful puzzle you've got a cat looking out the window there's a record player down at the bottom i mean it this puzzle oh actually there's another cat there there's a white cat down here and a black cat up there i just love this puzzle i think it was great it was a lot of fun this was a square puzzle the first three puzzles that i showed you that i did from ebu were round, whereas this one is square, and you can see the square right on the back of the box. Okay, I'm going to show you the two Ravensburger puzzles that I did, and this one here is called a prey all day or a prey ski, and it is a winter scene in a ski cabin. So after you're done skiing or between when you're taking a ski break, you go and you have some hot chocolate, you sit by the fire, and that's what this is. It was a great puzzle. I really, really enjoyed it. 500 pieces, so it was very easy. The elements were very easy to ascertain the differences in, so it was a cool puzzle to put together. The other Ravensburger puzzle that I did in... December is called Cozy Bathroom, another woman reading in the bathtub. Who of us has not done that? And there you have her reading. She's got her candles. There's a cat. There's a dog. It's just beautiful. Now, I thought this puzzle would be really easy, but the, the elements above the bathroom sink, the brass or the gold were so similar that I struggled with that a little bit. And then the, the French doors, those curtains and the panels on the doors. So this one took a little bit longer than I imagined it would be for a 500 piece puzzle, but no worries, I loved it anyway. Okay, um, I wanna try to show you these by brand if I can. Okay, this is my, I believe my only masterpieces puzzle for December. And this one is called Sun Succulents. And I love this puzzle because it's a gradient puzzle. And goodness knows, I love gradient puzzles. I mean, in fact, I'm going to do a separate video on that in a few moments. But this was really fun. I did it obviously color by color. So I started with the red and the orange, and then I worked my way up to here. So there's very little pink and very little blue, but there's a lot of red and orange and quite a bit of yellow. Fun, fun puzzle. I love the Masterpieces brand, and I'm going to continue to buy them. Just trying to sort these by brand. This is a Cobble Hill puzzle, and this one here is called Vintage Art Materials. This is going to be featured in another video as well. I really enjoyed this puzzle because I love Shelly Davies, who is the artist or the illustrator, and I have her Rainbow series, and I have her Element series. And she has some other vintage series puzzles that I think I'm going to go ahead and get in January. So I should be getting at least three or four more. But I love these collage type puzzles. And that's why you're going to see this in the video. Another gradient style color puzzle was this color story puzzle. Colorful teacups. I got this from my friend Hope. I loved it. Again, gradient style. Just follow the colors. And at a 550 piece puzzle, I would consider this one of the easier puzzles. I really enjoyed it. I'm glad I got a chance to put it together. And I love finding 
different types of puzzles in the gradient style and that's exactly what this is by the way if i haven't mentioned the brand of this puzzle is seco and i've been doing more seco this year than i had for a long while okay i'm getting down to the okay so all the rest i believe are buffalo no one more seco let's look at this other seco and then we'll look at the buffalo puzzles this one here is called rustic lodge and it's, again, a Seiko puzzle, 1,000 pieces. The problem that I had with this puzzle, I'm just going to have the cover up there, is, I'll show you, all of this wood paneling and the time of day it was for the way the sky was and the couch and the cushions, I thought it would be an easier puzzle. But I have to admit, it was rather challenging. In fact, I do have the other one. This one is called Rustic Lodge Cozy Fire. I do have the other Rustic Lodge puzzle that I was going to work on in December, but I decided to put that into my February queue. So you'll see one kind of similar to this in just a month or so, but you won't see it in January and you won't see it for this month of December. I could not do two of these in the same month. That The dark elements, you know, with winter blues and my depression i just this wasn't a favorite now we're getting down to the buffalo puzzles and the video should be wrapping up soon because the very next puzzle that i want to show you is this beautiful beautiful amy stewart jigsaw puzzle called winter we reading nook anything to do with reading i love you've seen countless puzzles from me where there's books and cats and this has books and it has cats and it has a beautiful sky and it was a breeze putting together. Yes, it was a bit challenging because of the the style of the puzzle itself, but I really enjoyed working on it and I was really glad to have that chance to get it done. I love Amy Stewart. She's one of my absolute favorites. I'll save you two guys for last. Okay, here's two. I did two Steve Reed puzzles. This is Curiosity Shop Cat. I loved this one. This one was one of my easier puzzles for the month of December. Anything to do with cats, I love. Steve Reed does beautiful cat puzzles, and I do have a couple more of his puzzles in my queue to purchase either in January or February. So this, again, is called Curiosity Shop Cat. The other Steve Reed puzzle that I did was Comfy Spot, and remember uh, the basket case puzzle I showed you at first that had cats and yarn? Well, this has cats and yarn as well. I loved this puzzle. It was pretty easy to put together. Even though like when you see the cats and the colors and the cats, you would think that that would be a challenge. But once you did the balls of yarn in the top of the basket and the, oh, I can't remember what they are called when you crochet or knit uh, little toys but when you see those those I was able to put those together this together and the balls of yarn together so I didn't have a lot of craziness when it came to putting the cats together great puzzle plus this had some knitting needles and with the knitting needles it kind of helped to orient the pieces so you knew which way the pieces went when you worked on this one the last three puzzles that I did for December are Charles Wysocki puzzles and this is called Coco Break at the Copperfields. It's a 500 piece puzzle. I am gonna stop the camera for one moment. Okay, the reason that I, there's a reason that I stopped the video and I'm gonna leave that in with the editing. This is Coco Break at the Copperfields and you can tell that it's a winter scene and it's a 500 piece puzzle and it has five or six sleds in front, maybe eight. And then you have the cabin or the cottage with the snow on the roof and on the ground. I love this puzzle, but I did not know that it's quite similar to this summer puzzle also by Charles Wysocki. This summer puzzle is called Root Bear Break at the Butterfields, and it's the exact same style, but it's a summer scene. So I really loved it. So when I do this puzzle during the summer, I'll bring back Coco Break at the Copperfields to compare it to root beer break at the Butterfield. So I just thought I'd show you that because I thought it was kind of cool. Then another 
uh, Child's Wise Talking Puzzle I did, and I just completed this one uh, last night. This one is called Whaler's Bay, another 1,000 piece Child's Wise Talking Jigsaw Puzzle. I love this puzzle simply because I love Charles Wysocki. Now my intention was to work on his winter puzzles, but after doing a couple of snow puzzles, I decided, hmm, let me stick this into the stack. So when I use my spin the wheel app, this came up, I went ahead and did it. This puzzle only took two sittings. One sitting before I went to my daughter's house and one sitting after I got home. Very easy puzzle to put together and you can see why. You see the different houses or buildings or stores, whatever it is and the the sand and then you've got the sky and you've got the water so very easy to put together the last puzzle that i'm going to show you that i completed during the month of december is called cider books brooks farm cider brooks farm a another charles wysocki 1000 piece jigsaw puzzle charles wysocki is one of my favorite artists so i constantly look for his puzzles especially on the buy sell trade groups because a lot of his puzzles are out of print or discontinued so sometimes they pop up on the facebook groups and i try to be there to grab them and when i do you bet your bottom dollar i work on them so that is called cider brooks farm i loved it even though there was a lot of snow you would think this was a super hard puzzle but it really wasn't that crazy i i was able to get it done easy peasy so that makes for all of my December puzzles. I've got other videos I've got to make for you guys, but I just wanted to show you those December puzzle finishes. And like I said, 20 puzzles. What did I say? 14,000 some odd pieces. Let's find out. Just going back to the app. And I might even just put it, I'll pop it back up here too. 14,500 pieces. So it was a good month. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for watching this channel. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. And if you haven't already hit the like button, hit that too. I would appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.